Hi guys and welcome to another Bootstrap for Blueprints video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignTechTips.com. When we've been putting this little website together, it's Bootstrap 4 website, we put the wireframe together with the awesome Blueprint software. It took us about five minutes to put this site together that we've got here. And now we're going about the business of customizing it, making it our own with our own images and text and what have you. What are we doing today? In the last video, we created a download file button. As you can see, that's downloading the images when we click on that one. Today, we've got a call to action button underneath it. And I'm gonna have that pop up to a PDF that you can read and that you can also download if you wish. Really easy, so let's get that done. Okay, so here's our root folder. Root folder's the folder that when we actually built this with the blueprints here, it output the file to a folder. And we've just added the images that we've been adding to our site within our root folder here. So we can pull them just for there. There's the little download file we did for the download button yesterday. I'm gonna add a, a PDF to this folder. There we go. So I just added a PDF. It's I've called it B4R and it's going to be .pdf because it's a PDF file. When you open it up, it's just some info about Bootstrap. And we'll get their button to open this up and give them the opportunity to download it if they want to. So let's just shut that one back down. Let's open our index.html with our text editor. Going to need a text editor for this software. If you don't have one, you can download this one. It's free, it's brackets, and it's absolutely awesome. If you do have one though, any text editor should do. Okay, well let's find our call to action button. If you need to do a search, let's have a look at the site here. Let's go down to where we wanna go. Quite often with HTML, there's a lot of, lot of it. Um, let's copy a bit of this text and see if it can find it for us. I've just hit control C there. I'm going to open the brackets up. As with most apps, you can hit control F and get a search box up. And I'll paste the text that I had in there. And there it is. There's that button. It's found it right away. We were actually in the right spot. And that's what it says. I'm going to change this bit of text over here. Call to action is the actual button text. It says call to action. I'm going to change that to download file. download PDF and let's just change a bit of this text whatever you want to put in there now save our changes control s to save back to the site and refresh and as you can see, it's changed the text in the button and also the text there. But when I click on the button, it doesn't do anything because it's not actually going anywhere. So let's go back to our brackets text editor. Okay, if we go back down here and put in the actual correct one, at the moment it's got that in there. If we just delete that, and put in our file name, which if we look at it, it's B4R, and because it's a PDF, it'll be .pdf. As soon as I write B4, it should find it. There it is, B4R PDF. And it looks like there's a few little typos going on up above. That happens when I talk and type. There we go. Let's save this, Control S back to the site, let's do a refresh. Now when I hit the download PDF button, it should open it up in a new tab. It's actually opened it up in the same tab, that's fine. Here's our PDF and they can either read it or you can download it right there. Let's go back, I kinda like to have this open in a new tab. 
and to do that let's go back to our bracket software and after our href let's write target there it is right there equals two lots of inverted commas underscore blank target equals inverted comma underscore blank inverted comma that will now open it in a new tab and when you're putting your file names in here make sure you don't clip off those inverted commas or it will not work so let's save that control s back to the site refresh now when I click on it the site stays open and it opens the PDF in a new tab which is what I prefer for this sort of download and to me it looks like there's a not quite enough padding on the bottom of this it looks like we should have more on the bottom let's have a quick look back yeah here's the body let's it's got padding top of three and padding bottom of one let's change that to two padding bottom to two these are the inbuilt bootstrap four padding classes that you can use save that and see if that makes any difference we can always whack it up to three that's a bit better it looks more central that way and what about that button do we want to make it different perhaps how about if we made it green we can do that simply by changing the class to success let's have a look here we've got a button button we got button extra small I'm just gonna have button regular so I'll take the extra small off of there and I'm gonna take the button small away and I'm gonna call it button success which will turn it green and the button raise gives it the shadow let's save that and see what we've got should be a green button now I don't know if that's gonna work or not and it should be slightly bigger there we go and I think again we want to just add a little bit more padding down the bottom so let's change that to three here we are padding top three padding bottom two padding bottom three so save back to the site refresh well there we go that's fine and everything's working just as it should be and there's the download right there so that's how to add a pdf link and pdf download link and pdf read link to your site with a call to action button really easy to do so i hope you've enjoyed that and found it useful like i say don't forget you can download the uh, blueprint software from the link below this video and there's an 80 percent off coupon that goes with it there that they've kindly given us so if you want to do that, it's down below the video. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.